I just have a thought I want to share today. Uh, God moved at the 9 o'clock service. I believe God's going to continue in this service. But I got one thought. It's out of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37. It's a thought out of the mouth of Jesus that I believe is, is, uh, is relevant to the moment that we're in as believers, as those who are trying to figure it out, those who are trying to walk this thing out with the Lord, which is all of us. I got a thought, simple, one verse. I won't even have you standing long, one verse. And Jesus says, but let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Now, full disclosure, that's a New King James translation. And if you break it down to the Greek, it reads it a little differently. I mean, it works, but, but I like to be as accurate as possible. Because there are two words, well, at least two words for evil in the Greek. One word really means evil. It means depraved. It means wicked, right? It really means bad. This other word for evil means hurtful. I mean, this is more like hurtful. This will hurt you. This will, it's hurtful in its effect is how that particular word that's used there is, is laid out. It's, so they put the two words up there. So the word that's used there is a second word. It means it's, it's hurtful in its effect. And so it better reads, that passage better reads, let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you do anything outside of that, it can be hurtful to you. Father, I thank you so much for your word. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. And God, your sons and daughters are gathered here, Lord God, not to hear man's clever speech, but they're here to hear a divine word from you that will touch them, that will bless them, that will feed them. We acknowledge that we don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. We need your word. We're desperate for your word. And so God, send a word, God. And I just believe, Lord God, as I submit myself to you, that you will allow the spirit of wisdom and revelation and insight and knowledge and prophecy and the full measure of heaven's resources to get to the people you love the most. That is humanity. That is your creation. You love us so much. And so, God, I thank you that we're going to partner for these next 15, 20 minutes. We'll partner together, Lord God, and feed your sons and daughters in a way that will edify them, that will shore them up, that will bless them, that will break yokes if necessary, God, that will bring clarity where there was confusion. And, Father, may the end result of this time together be all of us leaving out of here better, clearer, stronger, shining brighter because we're in your presence. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. High five somebody. Say, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. Today, today I, I want to, you're in the right place or you wouldn't be here. I want to deal with this, this thought today and, and if I'm honest, I'm still you know, full disclosure, I'm still wrapping my head around this thought. And, and, and I believe it's, you know, if, if you know me, you know, I don't, I don't really like, like, sermons. Like, we're going to sit there and I, I like to listen and share what I hear so that we all can get what we need. And, uh, and so I want to talk today about non-negotiables. And I, I want to share this thought with you that I believe is going to shore you up. And so the, the backdrop or the context of this, this statement that Jesus makes about letting your yes be yes and your no be no, and if you do anything beyond that, it can be hurtful to you. The backdrop is Jesus is preaching a popular message, which is called the Sermon on the Mount, and he's talking about a lot of things. I love it. He is challenging religious culture at the time. He is bringing revelation uh, to, to areas where, where religion had lost its potency. It lost its value. And people were locked into rules without understanding what the thought was behind the rule. Because it is not the rule that is significant. It is the idea underneath the rule that has value, which means that if you get the idea, you don't need the rule. You'll catch that later, but that's okay. And so, and so Jesus is teaching, he's teaching, he's teaching. And then I love this, 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 this passage because he starts talking about integrity. One of the things that I love about Jesus more than anything else is his integrity. 
And when I say integrity, I'm not talking about Jesus or, well, Jesus, we know he lived a sinless life. But when I use the term integrity, I'm not talking about perfection, right? Because integrity and perfection are not the same. They're not the same. They're different things. Integrity has to do with you being true to who you are and who you present yourself to be. You have integrity when your yes is yes and your no is no. My dad was not um, in my life the way that I wanted him to be in my life. And, and I don't say that with bitterness, God rest his soul. I say that with an understanding that, that his dad wasn't in his life. And so sometimes you can't give what you did not get. And so he wasn't in my life. But I tell you one thing I remember my dad saying. And he said, man, your word is all you've got. And it wasn't much, but it was everything. It was absolutely your word is all you got. So integrity is not that you always get it right, but it's that you're always true. And that's why you can have prostitutes with more integrity than church people. You're not ready. Okay, we're not going to do that. You can have pimps with more... Because it's not about perfection. It's about what I am presenting to you, you're going to get. Even if what I'm presenting to you is crazy, it's the, at least you know it's me. Sometimes I would rather have your crazy than your pretend. Because at least I know I got you. Even if you're crazy. But if you're pretending, I don't know what I have. Which means that you might be crazy, but you're pretending. If you're crazy, I want to know you're crazy. And maybe we can work out a deal. Maybe there's some way for your crazy to fit in my kingdom. But if I don't know what you are, because you lack integrity. Anyway. So he's saying, let your yes be yes. And your no be no. And I, and I looked at that and I'm like, wow. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. He doesn't say let yes be yes and no be no. He says let your yes be yes, and your no be no. He's speaking to the fact that all of us, at some point in our life, ought to have non-negotiables. I feel the Holy Spirit. Because oftentimes, most of us, many of us are negotiating with things we shouldn't be. The world, this country, this country is a democracy, but you are not a democracy. A democracy literally by, if you break down those words, demo has to do with people and kratia has to do with power. So, so democracy means the power is with the people. And so that's why democracy works in a country, because a country is comprised of a whole bunch of different people and a whole bunch of different thoughts and a whole bunch of different ideas. And in order to make the country work, function, and operate, or it should work and function and operate, is by this system of government called democracy, because it has to be about everybody. Everybody has to be included. So democracy works in a country, but a democracy does not work in me. I cannot be a democracy because if I personally am a democracy, then I'm giving my power away to everybody else. Can I talk to you like this just for a second? I can't be, a, I can be democratic because I have to function with people who think differently and believe differently and walk differently and aspire differently. So I can be democratic without being a democracy. I am a kingdom and God is my king. And my king speaks to me and tells me what my yeses are and my noes are. So within myself, I am true. Does that make sense? But when I go to the table to do something for the whole, that's when I put my democratic hat on. But even in my democracy, I never compromise me. Because I have to live with me. Nobody has to live with you except you. And so, so Jesus, what's amazing to me about Jesus is that Jesus, many, most scholars, most theologians believe that, that Jesus started his ministry when he was 30. He started his ministry when he was 30, and, and he went to the cross when he was approximately 33. So in three years, he accomplished more than most people accomplish in their lifetime. So what was he doing up to 30? And of course, there's a bunch of speculation about that. But one of the things that I do believe that Jesus was doing in that time 
was discovering his non-negotiables. Before he would even step out into, a scene, into the scene of prominence, he worked out within himself his non-negotiables. Everybody needs non-negotiables. You can't have an identity without non-negotiables. And, and the reason why I take my time to say this is because I believe that we're moving into a time where, where everything is shaky and everything is flimsy. And it used to be just, you know, just do whatever and everything was fine. But we're seeing that that don't really work. You need some non-negotiables, and I believe that what God is doing is God is getting ready to raise up a bold generation of people who do not compromise who they are, who do not compromise what God has said to them, and there's going to be something very appealing about these people, and they're going to be the heads and not the tails. And I'm going to prophesy this, and I spoke it Thursday night. God is getting ready to raise some of you up in such a way, and the qualifier is that you're submitted to God, but he's getting ready to give you some wisdom and insight and knowledge that is so awesome and appealing that people are going to be drawn to you kings are going to come from north the south the east and the west from near and far to sit at your feet because your yes is your yes and your no is your no and you have non-negotiables and you have spent enough time with Jesus to recognize the times and the seasons and what people ought to do and they're going to seek you out God is looking for some people who are unshakable unmovable I've spent time with Jesus Jesus. I know what this thing is all about. I'm not worried about what's happening over here or what's happening over there. I've got some non-negotiables. I can't be bought. I can't be bid. I will not bow down. I am who I am. And I believe that there's some people like that in this room right now. I feel it. He's going to raise up some people. God is getting ready to flip some things in your life. You're getting ready to go from begging and saying, when is it going to be my time? And God is getting ready to anoint you, put a robe on you because you were faithful when other people weren't and the next thing you know you're going to be the head and not the tail if that's your word take a minute and holler back at me I'm ready for this thing I'm ready to be the head and not the tail up in this piece I'm tired of compromise I'm going to say this thing right I'm going to say this thing right I'm going to say this thing right you got to get to a place where your yes is yes and your no is no there's some in this room and you're too flexible I feel this prophetically you are too flexible if you would have held on to your no you would be so much further in life I feel that for somebody you are negotiating in areas where all you gotta do is stand flat footed and that thing is gonna happen there are times, even in negotiating, in any negotiations, there are times where you might be buying a car or buying a house. And here is a, the, in negotiation, there is a mystery. And the mystery in negotiation is that you don't know where the buyer or the sellers, you don't know what the buyer or the seller's real number is. And they don't know where your number is. And so you walk into this, this situation and, and there is this mystery. And so what you do is you, you put something out there. Now, a smart person already knows how low they're going to go. You already know how. So, so you, you start somewhere. And there are moments that I have been in where, you know, some people think you're just supposed to keep continuing to negotiate down to. And you're supposed to keep splitting the difference. Until you come, the devil is a liar. I ain't splitting nothing. This is my number. And sometimes, sometimes you're in negotiations and this is your number. And you're sure of your number. And then you walk out or they walk out and then you compromise. And you change. And I'm trying to use a parable to speak to somebody in here right now because I hear God saying that if you will stick to your number, it will turn around and walk right back to you because you didn't compromise. Your yes was your yes and your no was your no. Let's talk about how you get to your yeses and your no's because my yes is different from your yes and, and, and your no is different from my no. Sometimes one of the greatest things that, that gives you your non-negotiables is pain. No one likes pain, but let me tell you something, man. Pain is anointed. It was quiet in here. <laughs> it just went silent. Just, just the music stopped, everything. Just, no, pain, pain, pain is anointed. 
Pain is one of the number one thing, number one things that God uses to get you to your non-negotiable. You ever been hurt so bad by something that you said, I will never. <laughs> ever. Do that again. Sometimes that's the Lord. Pain. It's just funny how anointed pain is. We'd be like, oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I didn't. You get, just get delivered real quick from something. Sometimes God's speaking and you won't work. So he has to allow this thing called pain. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And don't be mad at it. Because if God allowed pain to produce a non-negotiable in your life, that means that whatever that area was is critical to your destiny. Feel the Holy Spirit. It's critical to your destiny. That word, when we looked it up, it said, it said let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything that is more than that is, has hurtful effects, has hurtful experience. So that means that ultimately what we're trying to, to drill down to is what our yeses are and what our noes are. Wow. If I don't know what my yeses are and what my noes are, then I can wake up one day completely lost. I, I got to say this right. If I don't know what my yeses are and what my noes are, then I don't know who I am. That means that to a certain degree, I am identityless. And this is not the right world to be identityless in because we will give you an identity tomorrow if you let us. Are you tracking with me? Kings understand their yeas and their nays. Queens, I'm using that term kings intersexually, but I'll throw in queens out there as well. Kings and queens, we know who we are. And we know what reflects us and what does not reflect us. And we are confident in what God has revealed to us as our yeses and our noes. And I take my time to share this with you because I think that in this moment that we're in, there's some people in this room and you're, you're, you're very close to significance like you've never seen before. But I think the missing link, the last little thing that will tip you over the edge is you getting rock solid serious about who you are and what you say yes to and what you say no to and you're not moved by certain rooms and certain environments because what will happen is, see sometimes we have a yes but it ain't a solid yes. It says let your yes be yes. In other words, you could have a yes that, that, that doesn't stay yes for long. You could have a no that, that, that doesn't say no for long. What does that look like? It, it's, it's like when you're like, I'll never do that again. And then you get in certain rooms and you walk out of that room having done it again saying, I'll never do that again after this time. <laughs> shaky, shaky, shaky. Jesus was not shaky. In the face of great opposition, he was not shaky. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. His yes, was people followed him. Why did people follow him? It says because he taught as one who had authority. How do you get authority? You get authority when you have non-negotiables. There's some things God has given you words. He's given you words. And if you're honest, and I love everybody, but hear me. If you're honest, you have to believe the word that he gave you. So the word can't even come alive and work in your life because you are not cooperating with the word because of your disbelief. Can I talk to you like this? I'm not beating. It's not punishment. We just, we, we're trying to get over. Come on, somebody. We, we're trying to get to the other side up in here. 
But there could be a part of you, a part of you that is in disagreement with a yes that God has given you, and that is not why it's materializing, because God has said yes, he has given you the yes, and, and your yes is a yes and maybe. In other words, for you, it is your yes is a maybe. And God says, let your yes be a yes. I feel this. Some of you need to be baptized in the words that God has given you. Some of you need to dive right back in to what he said and live there until you see it come to pass. Because everything that God said will be seen if you believe it. Mm -hmm. Can I take my time a little bit? I'm trying to get us, I'm trying to get us to a place where our yes is yes. We're confident. We, we have authority. We are not walking around hoping something will happen. I feel this. There's not a hope anywhere connected to your destiny. God says, for I know the plans. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. God is saying, I've already seen your end. So you're not hoping, you're not wishing, you're not rolling the dice in Vegas talking about 7-Eleven. Your situation is already settled in the word that God spoke. And when you realize that and when you embrace that, you no longer compromise. Your yes is your yes and your no is your no because God has already spoken to you. God has already said it. It's settled. So I move into a room and if the room is for me, praise the Lord. If it's not, I I keep it moving and I shake the dust off of my feet because I'm going somewhere. I'm chosen. Do me a favor. Take about five seconds and shout at the top of your lungs. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. And since I'm chosen, I don't compromise. I feel the Holy Spirit of God. Compromising makes you weak and you think that compromising makes you fit in but fitting in is what makes you weak It's your distinction that makes you stand. I feel God It's your distinction That's why it's your yes Family My yes Is different from your yes and my no is different from your no, which means that there might be things that others do that you can't. But you can't. And sometimes, family, it feels unfair. Man, they doing it. And they doing it well. And they doing it and they're prospering. That's fine. That's their yes. My yes, my personal yes, is developed through my experiences with God. And sometimes pain is a part of that. Pain says, you can't do that. But my friend just did it. And they're good. That's fine. I ain't going to do it you. I ain't going to do it you. And then sometimes God calls you to do what nobody else around you is doing. And don't think that that's strange. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, narrow is the path. Yeah. We don't like that verse. See, check this out. I, I, love, I love the word I love. And this is G I love Jesus' words because they're timeless. They're timeless, right? Jesus says, he says, he says, broad is the road. That leads to destruction. Watch this. Which means that where most people are going, in the long run, it's a little tricky. And then he says, the straight gate is narrow. So if you, if you bring that down to your life, your life is not this broad, random, I do this, I do that, I do all of this, I do whatever I want to do. Nah. Uh-uh. Your path, family, is narrow. 
And that's why you have to have non-negotiables. Because while you're negotiating, you're wasting time. And while you're negotiating, you're getting weaker. And while you're negotiating, you're attracting things to your journey that aren't supposed to be. <laughs> Baby, this journey is light. It's focused. It has intentionality. I love everybody. And I have a lot of influential friends and, 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 and many of them, most of them within my friends, they're great people, like great people and have strong followings. And then I look at other people's followings. And I'm like, there is something wonderful about you somewhere, but what you're presenting, how did that become follow worthy? We're not even following brilliant people anymore. Like, and that's not a dig on anybody. Like, like, but what happened? Maybe it's what Jesus was talking about. He said that the, the gate that leads to crazy is wide. There's a lot of people on it. A lot of people on it. Isn't that crazy? And, and we want to be influencers. It's funny that that movie is out about that little thing that jumped off uh, in the Bahamas. You heard about that fire uh, festival or whatever? You got to watch. I'm, there's, there's two documentaries. And look at me. This church we talking about. But yeah, we talking about it. Praise the Lord. But you got you to gotta watch it. It's really good. It's about the fire festival. The two documentaries, the one on Hulu, in my opinion, is the best. Watch both. Watch both. But the one on Hulu, in my opinion, is the best. But it talks about... It, it talks about how, man, this, this dude who is, appears to be a scam artist put on this thing and he got influencers, right? He got influ influencers on social media to promote this thing that was ultimately not what they were presenting it to be. I'm saying that very nicely, right? In case there's litigation that they passed to be on, you can sue me, but that's all right. God will fight for you. Don't try to sue you. I wish you would sue me. Jesus will jump all up in your butt. Don't you, don't you do it. Jesus get up on you. You look up and you be plagued and breaking out and measles and stuff like that. I think I'm gonna drop the case. No, no, but no, but 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 it's it's <laughs> for real though. No, I'm kidding, but 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 you gotta watch, especially the story of the fire festival, and it was a big disaster in 2017. You heard about it, but I think what's interesting is that they got these influencers to promote it. And so people, watch this, people were flying into the Bahamas, into another country. The Bahamas is beautiful. But they're flying into the Bahamas, another country, without all the details, simply because an influencer said go. And it, and it, was, a, it was a disaster. And it could have become a humanitarian nightmare. Going in the wide gate. Non-negotiables, baby. What, what are your non-negotiables? What has God and life revealed to you up to this point in your life that constitute what are your yeses and your noes? Where are your boundaries? Where are your limits that you are so convinced about that if somebody slapped 40 million down on the table right now and said, just break it a little bit, you would say, take your 40 million and get up out of my face because I am who I am and I can't be bought and I will not bow. I don't think that you are even ready to enter the real world in any real way unless you have established your yeses and your noes. I remember I first planted the church in North Hollywood. And, and young, young Hollywood was coming, and those that are trying to make it in the business were coming. And, and I was pastoring them, I was speaking to them. And some who are in that situation, you're still here. Well, you're not still here. Hopefully you, the word has blessed you and you, you've moved on to greater things, but you, you understand what I'm saying. And, and I remember my advice for many people was, don't even go on one audition until you get whole. Pat.
Pastor, that seems extreme. What are you talking about? Because if you're not whole, you're going to step into that room desperate, needing something, not, who, not knowing who you are, and could easily lose yourself, end up doing something that you said or you thought you would never do because you didn't have your non-negotiables. There's some, and you've been believing God for something big, but if you don't have your yeas and your nays, you're not ready for it. I might even add, you can't even recognize what's for you. One of the things that I love about God defining your yeses and your noes is one of the things that it does is it helps you to recognize what's for you and what's not for you. It is not this, this wanderlust spirit. I know that we like to talk, I'm a wanderlust, and we think that's cute. It actually is not cute. I'm on a mission, baby. I, I ain't got time to be getting lost. Are you tracking with me? I lost too much time already fooling with some people and fooling with some things. I'm trying to walk in the path that God has ordained for me. I want to walk accurately. I'm trying to win. Come on, somebody. Where are my winners at? I'm trying to win in life. I'm trying to win in love. I'm trying to win in legacy. I'm trying to win in business. I'm trying to win in finances. I'm trying to win. I ain't got time to be wandering. I'm trying to win. Because I realize no matter how young I feel like I am, time is ticking. Time is ticking, and there's nobody under the sound of my voice that hasn't lost time somewhere. I'm trying to make up for the years that the locusts have eaten. See, that's why Jesus did more in three years. He figured out his yeses and his noes, and he wasn't playing. Even when he was young, they were looking for him and like, why are you looking for me? Why are you wandering? I'm not. I must be about my father's business. I need to get my yeses and I need to get my noes because I'm getting ready to step into my ministry and I'll be unshakable, unstoppable, unbendable. You're not even ready for the room until you establish your non-negotiables. You're so busy trying to get in the room, you need to get busy trying to get in the prayer room to get your non-negotiables so you can step in that room and shine. Take it or leave it. This is who I am. This is what you get when you get me. And if you're not the one, tell me quickly so I can step and find what God has for me. I ain't mad at nose. I love nose. Nose move me one step closer to the right yes in Jesus name. Oh, I love me a good no. Hallelujah. Thank you for not wasting my time. Thank you for not wasting my heart. Thank you for that no. Because there's a yes waiting for me. If you believe right now, that there's no no that has hurt you, but it's only helped you to get to the right yes. Take 15 seconds and give him about to happen bring my towel please what's about to happen what's about to happen thank you what's about to happen right now is we about to get some things shored up in here right now we're about to break all that looseness off of us we're about to be rock solid steadfast unmovable always abounding in God's work that's what's about to happen Your non-negotiables are your strength. They're your strength. 
And we got this television deal. Me and my wife. And we knew going in what we wanted. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes, we did. And we've got some experience in entertainment, but out of all those who are executive producing this, pro this, this project, we probably have the least track record in entertainment. So what? And we put our attorneys on that bad boy. Oh, yes, we did. Feel the Holy Ghost. We put our attorneys on that bad boy. These are our non-negotiables. Because if we walk, there's no show. You got to see your life like that. I feel the spirit of God. You got to see your life like that. If I walk, I take the show with me and I put my show on the road and I'm going to be everything that God has called me to be. You're going to wish you had taken the deal. As it relates to your destiny, you are the show. And what you and God negotiate as your non-negotiables, that's it. Oh, and by the way, they did the deal according to our terms. Oh, yes, they did. I was in a big room Friday. So, I got a big God and a big purpose and a big promise and big backing and that's why your yes has to be yes and your no has to be no anything outside of that is going to hurt you it's going to diminish you and the last thing you want to do is please somebody else And inwardly be at odds with yourself. Shakespeare, Hamlet, to thine own self, be true. I want to pray for you. We're out of time. I want to pray for you. If you're here and you feel like the Holy Spirit was speaking to you, and you feel like, man, I want to get shored up. Or maybe you're like, man, I, I, I've been so flexible that I don't even know what my yeses or my noes are. I don't even know what my non goes. If I'm honest, I've been so fearful that I have abandoned any, any concept of my yes being my yes and my no being my no. I'm, I'm tired of feeling weak. I'm tired of like, man, saying that this is who I am and then I get in the right and the wrong places and certain environments and next thing you know, I'm, I'm compromised. I'm just tired of that, man. I just, I want to be who God has called me to be. I've been there, family. I've been there, boy, I tell you. I remember, man, in 2000, when I was first beginning to walk with God, God was telling me what, who I was, my yeses and my noes. And then, man, I would get around certain people, and one person in particular, man, and she would just break me down. I just abandoned all just sense of non-negotiable. And I got tired of it, man. I just said, God, I'm tired of of compromising and compromising it doesn't hurt God it hurts you because now you're divided that word integrity ultimately means undivided so you're divided when when you in the clarity of the presence of God and the clarity of of hinds your experience perceived via hindsight and the clarity of that you're good oh okay I see clearly all right, yeah, that's not, yeah, that's not good. That's, that's a no, that's a yes. Okay, I'm flowing. And then you get in certain places and, and all that collapses and crumbles. And then you've satisfied an environment, but then you got to go home with you. And you got to look yourself in the mirror. And that's when the other guy comes, a negative one comes, and he tries to depress you all the more. Because now he's talking to you about you. Not simply what you did, but about you. You ain't nothing. You can't even keep your word. You ain't nothing. And the devil is a liar. You will always be something. Regardless of what you do, you will always be something. But you put yourself in a position to have a fool talk to you like that when your yes isn't yes and your no isn't no. 
And I'm telling you, family, I promise you, I wish I could say this as clearly as I see it. It's always difficult to translate into human words what, what God has placed in your spirit. So it's just a challenge for me, but I'm telling you what I sense is that there is significant strength in you not budging. Amen. Some of you are in the middle of something. You're in the middle of something, and you're almost, I hear it so strongly. You catch me. You're in the middle of something, and you almost, man, you all, there's a part of you that wants to just, 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 you know, it's been going on for a long time, and there's a part of you that just kind of wants to just, just kind of bend and lean back and just take something. I hear God saying, don't move. Yes. Don't move. Woo. Don't move. Stay, stay right where God told you to stay. Stay, stay right there. Because if you don't move, it will move. I feel the Holy Spirit. If you don't move, it will move. Because of your faith. What does that scripture say? If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to, to that mountain and tell it to move and be cast into the sea. That's how powerful you are. So you don't know how powerful you are. That's why God continues to speak to you, to shore you up in how strong you are. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You're a mountain mover. Thank you. Thank you, so stop being moved by mountains. Yes. You're a mountain mover. So I want to pray for you. I wish I had more time with you. But I, I want to pray for you. I want to seal this word. If you haven't come and you know you need to come because you feel like the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, here's what I'm going to pray for. I'm going to pray that God would highlight, would highlight your yeses and nos, your non-negotiables that will become the parameters by which you will do destiny. And then I'm going to pray that God, by his spirit, would give you the strength to stand in your non-negotiables, that he would break off any yokes, that he would heal any broken areas that make you compromise. Some of you, man, I wish I had more time. Some of you have absolutely no idea who you are. And I understand it because we are the hardest people to see. It's, you, you will always be the hardest person to see yourself. It will always be you, others will see you. It will be hard for you to see you. I get that. I get that. You don't know who you are. And you go into situations. And the only reason why you're in the room is because someone knows who you are. Trust me, if you weren't valuable, you wouldn't even be around. But, but, but some people who have an agenda on the other side of that, are banking on you not knowing who you are. And I feel some of you need to press reset. Be bold enough. Any situation that you have found yourself in that happened through a door of compromise, I dare you to walk back out of it. And look at it again from the perspective of you knowing who you are and see if it's worthy of you entering again and be willing to let it go because the reason why no is just as powerful as yes is because if you make yourself available to one thing, you make yourself unavailable to another thing, which means that if you make yourself available to a lesser thing because of compromise, the greater thing can no longer be in your experience. This is a big deal. I've got a million things to preach about, but this is what I could not be shaken from for you today, and it's going to change everything. And all you had to do was let your yes be yes and your no be no. You're worth it. God's word speaks to you according to your worth. And we, we struggle. I wish I could be with you all day, man. We struggle with our sense of worth. And that's why our yes sometimes is not yes. And that's why our no is sometimes not no. Because we struggle with believing about ourselves what God constantly tells us about ourselves. 
If you ever question your worth and your value, all you got to do is read one thing and it should heal it. It's, it goes like this. And God created man in his own image and in his own likeness. Let me tell you something. I don't put my name on anything that is not excellent. And that's just me. Hello, somebody. Do you think God would put his name on anything that was not remarkable? That was not brilliant and beautiful and awesome and exquisite and invaluable? So when we struggle with a sense of worth because perhaps we are allowing man's standards to attempt to communicate or validate our worth, then that puts us in the compromise zone. Today, I want you to settle it right now. I am valuable for real. And not no positive speaking self. That's all wonderful, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a divine truth that resonates deep down on the inside of you, in the place of you that knows that you were created in the image of God to settle once and for all, I am worthy of God's best. If it wasn't the case, and even if I wasn't, Jesus made me worthy. Even if I made some mistakes, he took my mistakes in his body, nailed it to the cross, was raised up victorious from that, paid the price I'm worth something and then you have to always suspect that you are worth more than you think you are I'm worth more even when I think high of myself I'm worth more even than that so I just want to pray for you father I just thank you so much for this moment here with your children I believe you've spoken to us, God. You've affirmed us. You've inspired us. You've brought us clarity. You've strengthened us, Lord God. God, I just thank you for the value I see all over this room, for the value of those who are watching via live stream, Lord God. And Father, I'm praying those two things like I said I would. Father, I pray that you would manifest those yeses and those noes that you have been cultivating in us for years through our relationship with you through our experiences God there are some non-negotiables that are exclusive to us and our journey and I'm praying that you would move in the lives of each and every person under the sound of my voice and shore them up in their yeses and their noes so that they can shine the way that they're supposed to shine so they can not take less than what is for them. Give them a strong yes and an even stronger no. I feel like the no is even more important than the yes. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. There's someone here that need to say no to close a door that has weakened them. I thank you that even in this moment you're giving them strength to say no. Through the joy of the yes that is waiting for them. And then Father, fill us with your spirit. The Holy Spirit knows the yeses and the noes that are assigned to our lives. So we need your spirit. You said if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the desires of our carnality, the lesser part of us. I just want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your presence. I feel it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I receive it. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I hear it. And I receive it too. Lord, reveal to me my non negotiables so that I might walk in my divinely ordered steps and so that I can lay hold of everything 
assigned to my life and leave a legacy that outlives me. I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making him who had no sin all of mine, all of my weakness, all of my shortcomings, all of my mistakes, and even my pain. You placed in his body, nailed it to the cross, and put it to death. And just as he was raised up, free and victorious, because I'm in him, I'm raised up too. And no weapon formed against me can prosper. My past is behind me. My future is very bright. And with Christ, I'm on my way in my destiny. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's just take a minute. And let's just worship and receive him. Come on.